This video is going to be my reaction to the Ravens' 29-24 loss to the Browns on the road in Week 8, really wasting a chance to get to 6-2. I don't, I don't know if you look across the rest of the NFL that there aren't three or four teams you could have gone on the road to face and gotten a better opportunity to win a game. I think the whole group should be assigned blame today, for coaching staff, players on down. When you lose to you know, what, in my opinion, is an inferior team globally, and make a quarterback like Jameis Winston look that good. You deserve all the criticism that you're going to get, that fans and reporters are, are going to dish out. The Raven, Ravens fans should be upset and frustrated. You lose to a 1-6 and six team on the road, one that finished the game without they, – they certainly have a lot of high-end talent, right, with Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, David Njoku on offense, who's always given us trouble, and Nick Chubb in his second game back from injury. But two other better defensive players and, and a second defensive back, a third player essentially on defense – didn't finish the games. Ravens had a golden opportunity, in, in my opinion. And look, every NFL team has talent, clearly, but there's nothing special about the Browns team that we face today from a cohesion standpoint, a style of play, execution. The Ravens are just terrible on defense from the top down, coaching staff on down to players. They did leave too many points out on the field today. Offensively, we'll get into that a little bit later. And then Justin Tucker can't miss field goals like he did. We lost 29-24. We had the miss by Tucker, who I think was 50 yards, 51 yards. And that was rough to see because he had looked better the last two or three or maybe even four weeks. I could be wrong. But that play was preceded by, that missed field goal, I should say, was preceded by a bad drop from Bateman on, I think, a third and eight. We would have been short of the line to gain on that drop from Bateman. But the field goal would have ended up probably being 44 or 43 yards, maybe 45, somewhere in that range. We also dropped a ton of interceptions on defense. I get it. People are going to talk about Eddie Jackson all day. Go right ahead. But Kyle Hamilton, if you want to be a superstar player, you can't drop that. That's a game-winning interception. That's as easy as it gets in the NFL. No one there to defend it, defend him or stop him from catching the football. No one on this defense right now is making breaks on the ball. Nobody is breaking on the ball and, make, and, and they're at the point of attack to challenge. I mean, we are occasionally, but it seems like we're all stuck with our foot in the ground because too many times we're staring at the quarterback, number one, or complete lack of awareness of the situation. I'm talking about the third and seven that they convert, convert to Elijah Moore where we're bringing heavy pressure and our Darius Washington is threatened by a vertical route. We're bringing seven-man pressure. It's like it's a third and seven with a minute and 20 left, dude. They're going to try to get seven or eight yards. Um, in any case, talk about Eddie, Hamil Eddie Jackson all you want. Probably not as cool to talk about Hamilton, but he deserves criticism as well, in my opinion. There's enough blame to go around. I, I briefly have to go in on the defense some, even though in reality it's not worth talking about. There is no fix for this. At this point in the season, after eight games, you really are who you are at this point, barring wholesale changes. I'm talking about personnel and coaching. And, and they should explore those options, all of them, for real. I, and I'm talking about players like Hamilton, Roquan Smith, Kyle Van Noy, Brandon Stevens. If they screw up an assignment, take their ass off the field for the next two plays. That works. I know pe people don't like this guy. They don't like Bobby Net Knight, but... That message works for athletes. And if it doesn't work, meaning you want to fix the problem and get back on the field, you're a loser. And we don't have losers on the defensive side. We do not. We have winners. We have guys who can play. And right now they're making average to below average quarterbacks look great. Jameis Winston threw for 344 yards today on 27 of 41 passing. He must have got the looks that he planned on seeing, meaning whatever his pre-snap thought was about the look coverage post snap how many times did he have to hesitate maybe two or three it seemed to me like he was getting look he wanted throwing the ball oftentimes in rhythm quickly if you ask me they were eight of 15 on third downs they being the browns they averaged 6.1 yards per play scored 29 points on us all of that despite only rushing for 80 yards at 3.5 yards per run play and we had a strip sack from Kyle Hamilton. Basically, my point is, this could have been worse. We are absolutely lost defensively. That's on Zach Orr. You knew where I was going with it. There is just no way to deny it at this point. Ultimately, the margin for error for our offense is too small because of how terrible our defense is. And something's got to change. If we, Well, look at it this way. Let's say our offense was playing as poorly as our defense is. 
with the caliber of talent we have over there, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Mark Andrews, who would you blame? You would blame Todd Munkin. Let's not gloss over it just because Zach Orr, he deserves the same level of insight. And at this point, oversight. I don't know who that person is to provide that oversight. I know it's not a nice thing to say. He's doing a terrible job right now. There's just no other way to put it. I'm sorry if that's unpleasant to hear. Zach Orr is a career raven in his early 30s. The story is great. I agree with all those things. But this is a results business. And I just don't have any level of trust in that staff on that side of the ball to get things changed if someone from outside the building isn't able to come in and help or someone else take over. I, I hope to be really wrong. I hope that some of you record that last say, st- last couple of statements I made and a month from now or two months from now play it back and tell me how wrong and off target I really was. I would welcome that. But the reality is, well, let me ask you this. What do you see as something we can build on? We stopped the run, and we're still clueless to deal with the pass game at times. The Browns are just not a good offense at all. Let me let me do it this way. Let me explain to you how poor they are on offense. The she- First of all, it's Jameis Winston. So the shelf life on him performing well. Look, he performed well today. We could have had three or four interceptions. Eddie Jackson, I think, dropped two. One of them was an, a high-level, high-percentage chance for him. Hamilton's it's a terrible loss, No matter terrible drop. No matter how you want to describe it, it's a terrible drop. I think there's another one that I'm forgetting, but let's say it was three. Three potential interceptions. Either way, we give up 400 yards of offense to a Browns team that had only exceeded 300 yards of offense once in 2024. Another stat, you don't need it, but here's one. The Browns averaged 6.1 yards per play today, like I said. That doesn't sound like a lot compared to some of the things we've been producing on for our offense. But check out their yards per play this season in reverse order. 4.4, 4.6, 3.6, 4.2, 3.4, 4.6. That was to the Jags, who have one of the worst and softest defenses I've ever seen. And then 3.3. Basically, we are more than two standard deviations away from the mean on defense, probably closer to three. We couldn't get much worse. We're terrible, and we need a complete overhaul over there. And I know that some of you may think it's too soon for me to say that. And and I'd be welcome to watch the film tomorrow with people on my Discord or on my Patreon, and you can tell me where I'm wrong. From a structural standpoint, play calling, design, everything should be on the table, unless we just want to be happy with saying, hey, we signed a young guy who's a career Ravens guy that, that we love, and we think he's a great person, and he's been helpful to our defenses in the past. We had other options at this point. It's It would be fair to say, as a Ravens fan, we had other options that were in the building last year, and we let them go. At this point, we look like a team headed for just look at the schedule. We look like a team headed for ten and seven, maybe eleven and six at best. But we are now five and three after losing to a Browns team that I don't know how many more games they win this year. With barring unbelievable performances by our offense and Lamar, and I know none of that sounds kind or really nice to say. And it's and look, it's really not fun for me to put out there as a reaction video. But I I believe it to be the truth. Through eight games of data this season. We are not capable of getting into the right look on defense based upon the situation. And ultimately, that's your job as a coach and a head coach. And our situational awareness as a head coach, I think, is poor, too. I'll get to that a little bit later, talking about the first possession. we got to put people in position to succeed, and we're not doing that consistently, even though we had two or three dropped interceptions. It could have changed the tone of the game, but it wouldn't have changed the yards per play necessarily. Anyway, those factors, along with the missed kick by Tucker in the fourth quarter, the big plays given up by our defense. We did generate 387 yards of offense. That's all ruined by all those other factors. We averaged 6.2 yards per play. We didn't turn the football over once. And I know that the announcers talked about two or three throws in the first half that could have been intercepted. I, I disagree with the announcers, to be honest with you, on pretty much all of those except for maybe one. Essentially, they were talking about the Browns could have had two or three balls picked off When you say an interceptable pass, the insinuation is is that it was there 100% or 90% plus for the defense to get there first and make the pick, and they just dropped it, like Hamilton on the picture you see there. Sometimes it's a 50-50 ball. Sometimes it's 70-30, and people still call it interceptable. Stefanski at halftime made it sound like they dropped four or five picks, Um, and then he celebrated like he had done something at the end of the game. He literally stood there for three and a half hours and did probably less than I did and less than some of you in terms of energy output. But nonetheless, Lamar finished 23 of 38 passing, so extremely inefficient compared to our play in recent weeks. 
not talking about his performance, just the statistics. 289 passing, two touchdowns. The reality is I think this Browns defense is probably the fastest and most physical that we had faced since week one. Ward and JOK got hurt. That changed the dynamic. A second defensive back, I think, went out for the game. I, I don't remember his name. I know Emerson went down. At one point, I think he came back in, and we still lost. Two of ten on third downs offensively. The bad drop by Bateman that he must have lost in the sun. He was also losing his footing on that play. It was like 9.30 left in the game. It's a third down. We're trailing 20-17. to 17. If he catches it, we, we would have had the ball, I think, past midfield. It was a great throw by Lamar in the middle of the field. Bateman also had a drop on third and eight, like I said earlier, on on, ba- on uh, excuse me, a Tucker's miss earlier in the fourth quarter that would have put it, given us maybe a bit, a little bit higher percentage opportunity to to get a field goal. Aguilar had a drop on a third down in the second quarter when the game was still tied at ten. That was on a third down. Bateman's two officially going to be charged with two drops. I think. Look, the one in the fourth quarter into the sun, a baseball was different. You can block the sun with your your throwing hand and catch the ball with the glove. In baseball, football, you got to use both hands. Nonetheless, it's going to be you know a, a drop officially. Lamar had a really bad miss early in the game. I think it's our second possession where we settle for a field goal. It's a four man rush and it's a third down, I believe. Lamar and Flower. The design of the play wasn't for Lamar to target Flowers where he ended up throwing it. We got more time than we expected. And so that could impact it some. Lamar, I think, moved a little bit to his right, but his feet seemed settled to me, if I remember it correctly. And Flowers is wide open. I think he's open by six or seven yards. It's at least five. Let's do it that way. And the ball's overthrown. That one hurt because we settled for a field goal. And and I think you're looking at a touchdown there or a ball probably inside the 10, somewhere around the seven or the eight-yard line, if memory serves. But I, I don't remember the marker on the line. That's going to bring me back to my first my, – to my larger point here, besides how terrible the defense is and the dropped picks and the drop passes by our receivers, I think it's a bad decision to go for it on fourth and goal, fourth and one on the first possession. I think it's a poor play design and play call by Todd Munkin. The, we went wildcat to Henry. The Browns attacked it. We also ran to our right. like We're running to the weaker side of our offensive line from a run-blocking standpoint, Filele and Rosengarten over there. I didn't see the formation replay, but you can bet your ass that Ricard was either to our right or he was in motion, and I don't remember him being in motion. But the Browns attacked the the point of attack where Henry ran. It's really not that complicated. The play call stinks. I think the decision is not much better and, in fact, probably worse. I know. I get it. It's fashionable nowadays to say you got to go for it on fourth down. you got to score touchdowns. People want to reinvent the football wheel. I get it. Oftentimes, why I reject that is the people saying those things have never been involved with football at any level, number one. Or number two, they're people that are on the coaching staff that wouldn't have been there 20 or 30 years ago because they're not able to actually coach. They're just telling us whether we should go for it or not. In my opinion, I think it's 840 left, something like that, in the first quarter on our first drive. Take the points, and here's why. Now, look, it did work out for us last week against the Bucks, right? Fourth and three, Lamar throws to Andrews. But the Bucs are a terrible defense, guys. There's a huge difference between going for it against the Bucs when we're up 27 to 10 and against this Browns team, which plays a far different quality of, or brand of defense than Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay just gave up 31 points to the Falcons today and lost. It's not about pure analytics. It's the situation, and that's what's lacking in Baltimore from a player stamp, from a coaching standpoint. And it trickles down to the players. We end up looking like the dumb team on the field, at least on defense, and we're not dumb. We got too many good football players over there on the defensive side. I know I'm talking about the offense, but I'm kind of relating all of these things from poor situational awareness at the top, starting with Harbaugh, and then trickling on down to the rest of the roster. The the Browns have been playing good defense lately, even though their offense sucks. When we line up in a predictable formation, and then we just hand them hey information, pre snap intel. Here's going to be the point of attack, and we give it to them. They're tough, they're physical, they're big and strong, and they play hard. If it's a fourth and one against the Bucks last week, that's a different quality of defense. Check this out. Tampa Bay, they've allowed 36, 27, 41, and now 31 points in their last four games. Look at the Browns. They've only allowed, 20, they've allowed 21 points or less in five of their last six games. At the moment in time that Harbaugh makes the, that decision, first drive of the game, a little bit less than nine minutes left in the first quarter. 
the only thing you can go on in terms of, hey, could we make this is the first drive or the film you've seen. What film of the Browns looks bad on defense recently in their last six games? One game, I think, is against Washington. I'm not saying that you should never go for it. I'm saying against certain defenses, take your points. If we would kick, I'm not going to make a blanket statement, and I think it's it would be folly or a mistake to just say, hey, if we kick the field goal, then we're only down 29-27 in the last minute. But that's not true. The game flow and the score would have been impacted some. The Browns don't go for it, don't go for two, if we had if we had already had 27 points. The, the issue is you want settled situations as a football coach. You get the ball first. You score. You kick off. You go play defense. And there's a lot of issues on that side, clearly. But if you want a cycle of the – what you want is you want a cycle of the phases that's predictable, that you have practiced – before, the day before the game, we would call it bench drill. You practice your substitutions, getting guys on and off efficiently. You break that chain. You break that rhythm. You break that flow by going from offense to defense immediately. Normally, oh, it's never good, you know, but it's usually the result of a turnover. In this case, it's a failed fourth down call, offense to defense. I hated it on the first possession. I thought at the moment in time, we need points. Looking back on it, we damn sure needed them at the end. Nonetheless, we're in the lead 10-6 at halftime, uh, the, but the tone and the pace of the game was drastically different. Again, before Ward and JOK were out, I thought the Browns' defense, their speed on defense showed, their physicality, their aggressiveness. Now, that if we didn't decline to take that field goal on the first possession, again, I thought it was a wasted call with a wildcat play to, play to Henry. We still only have 13 points at the half. The point is that we're in a more un, we're in a more settled situation or rhythm or flow, and I thought that were it not for the brilliant blitz by Hamilton off the edge that forces the strip sack of Jameis Winston, Jameis Winston, we're probably held we're held in single digits in the first half. So you have to give credit to the Browns' defense. I did think that there was some interesting officiating today. The hold on Linderbaum on the quarterback draw was was ridiculously weak. It was just as bad as the Falele hold last week, but nonetheless, at the half, we're in the lead, and it's relatively even gameplay. 151 to 149 in terms of yardage for the Browns in their favor, but to that point, 30 minutes in, we're 0 of 5 on third down chances. The fourth down call ruined our first drive, like I've talked about. Looking back, to me, it's a mistake, but I understand it's easy to second guess, but it seems to me to be an example of us from a coaching staff standpoint, not having awareness of the talent level that's on the other side. Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, JOK was still in the game at that point. Their DBs are certainly talented. That, to me, looked like, in the first half, the most physical and talented defense we had faced since the Chiefs. We did have 65 yards rushing at the half, but 39 of that had come on Henry's big run that we turned into a field goal on our second possession. If you remember... That play, which is interesting about Tucker missing the field goal late, Tucker's kick was low on the field goal that he made on the second drive, and he asked for the ball to be switched on the kickoff. So it's really weird to me. You can't know which ball's being kicked in which situation. But at the half, Winston is 10 of 16 passing, 110 yards. As soon as we put him in known passing situations, he struggled. We just weren't able to do that today, even though they only rushed for 80 yards. They had six first downs on pass plays in the first half. And they had 10-plus yard receptions by Moore, Tillman, Njoku, and Jody and Judy. The writing was on the wall that we had the lead, but the Browns' defense was going to be there to slow us down or, or actually stop us in some cases. And our defense was going to have trouble matching up. The Browns only had two field goals on four possessions in the first half. I'm not counting the, the kneel down with 30 seconds left. But the feel of the game felt like it was going to be it appeared to me as if it was going to be decided in the final minutes, and, 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 and certainly it was. We gave up three touchdowns and a field goal in the second half, I believe. The Browns scored on four of six possessions. Our defense is just one of the worst in the NFL, in my opinion. The writing's on the wall, if you ask me. We did have a chance on defense to get a stop. About a minute 20 left. We're still in the lead, 24-23. It's third and seven, and the Browns have the ball on our 40-yard line. 
I don't know why. A couple of things to talk about here. It's it's a completion to Moore. He's got a little vertical stem on third and seven. We're bringing seven. Or maybe we're bringing six, but we're bringing pressure. And I think Roquan gets there to touch the quarterback a little bit late. You just have this overreaction by Ardarius Washington to a vertical stem. It's like we don't have awareness of the blitz that's coming. Yes, James, and, James Winston could just throw it down the field up the seam. I, I agree that that's a possibility. But what is the more likely play? What's the more likely result, number one? Number two, we are playing that coverage in that situation, in my opinion, so that if we give up a score, we give it up now. And Moore catches it for a seven-yard gain against Ardarius Washington. Yes, you can blame Ardarius Washington there, and I am. I am saying that above that level, above that point, the lack of awareness by our players on the field reflects the lack of awareness by our coaches. And I'm talking about Harbaugh, Zach Orr, and to an extent today, Todd Munkin, even though we did get 24 points out of the deal, could have certainly had more. I think it's a terrible coverage choice on third and seven, in my opinion, with that, that amount of time left in the game. And I think we had timeouts left there as well. Um, to, to my point about Winston, Put him in coverage situations where he has to throw into some type of window. Look at the throw that Hamilton dropped on the next snap, the first down. It's four yards over Moore's head. It's a terrible throw. There's people listening to this video who could make a better throw than Winston on that play. And then we end up giving the touchdown up. We, we assign Eddie Jackson to Tillman in the slot. He gets beat for a 38-yard touchdown. We still have a chance to win somehow, albeit low percent. We get down to the 24-yard line. Lamar's pressured a couple of times. Tries to put the ball. Actually, he does put the ball in a catchable spot to to Flowers. It's just well defended by the DB on third down and then fourth down. You know, really low percentage opportunity there. It's a game the Ravens didn't deserve the win, in my opinion. My attitude is not necessarily positive at all. You know that if you've been listening this long. But from a quality of play standpoint and game flow, it's not wrong to say this. If Ward and JOK don't go down, we're not going to be as effective throwing the ball in the second half. We had data, two and a half quarters data, that we weren't able to generate a ton against that team. Now, we did reach the Browns' 27-yard line four times in the second half. Only got 14 points to show for it because of the final possession that ended from the 24 and then the missed 50-yarder by Tucker. I think this may be one of the more disappointing losses in my memory partly because I have such a low opinion of Winston as a quarterback in the NFL at this point. Now, maybe I'll be proven wrong, and in the next six or eight or ten weeks, he resurrects his career and plays great. If so, good for him and good for the Browns. I think the Giants' loss on the road in 2024 comes to mind as a team that you really can't lose to more than one time if you play them ten, ten, ten different games. And that's how I look at this Browns team that we have on the field, that we had on the field today. The Steelers last year on the, on the road, week five, is another one. You leave so many points on the board and have a terrible interception late in the second quarter on a fade to OBJ against Joey Porter Jr. Maybe Jacksonville on the road late in 2022. Where, but Jacksonville, the Jags were more talented than last year's Steelers team and the Giants in 2022, even though they had Saquon Barkley. Those three losses to me stick out. Road losses where a lot of the formula that we're talking about, missed pass one or two, maybe some drops by our receivers, and then poor coaching decisions, leaving points out on the board. Sometimes poor co poor decisions by our offensive players as well. I don't think this one's going to make it fun at all for the next week for anyone. Not the players, not the coaches, not fans. Uh, I do intend to do a larger film study video on some of the good decisions I think Zach Orr made in this game. And then some of the very poor ones. We got at home against the Broncos and then the, the Bengals in the next two weeks. Nothing should be taken for granted. When the margin for error for our offense is this small, essentially if we don't overwhelm a team, we, can't get in, we can never get into that mode of our offense scores, we kick off, we get a stop, and we're right back on offense. And that goes back to my point from the first possession. Harbaugh had a chance to get us in a normal flow, a normal rhythm, cadence, if you will, of how football should be played by good teams. And when there's missed opportunities, wide receiver drops, a missed field goal, Lamar, one missed throw at least, that's all it takes for things to go down when you leave points out on the board, in my opinion, and interrupt that flow. Yes, still, nonetheless, Hamilton had a chance to seal the game. 
You can't drop that ball if you want to consider yourself one of the best safeties in the league. I get it. There's people that are going to grab at silver linings. I'm not capable of doing that now. You do have a convergence of factors that have to occur in order for losses like this to go down. Fine. But it's tough for me to take that stance as my final stamp on this game, knowing that we have more talent than the Browns. And we have a motivated Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, a Hall of Fame running back. And we just lost to a Cleveland team that I think we beat nine out of ten times. We play them in this matchup on the field in 2024. But, hey, all of those things, that's what teams end up saying when they're just not as good as they think they are. And right now, at 5-3, and three, that's who the Baltimore Ravens are. That's the Ravens team that showed up today. Not as good as they thought they were. And the coaching decisions, particularly early, reflect that. It's an overinflation of who you think you are. I'm talking about Harbaugh going for it on fourth and one. Instead of taking your medicine and just playing football the way that it's supposed to be supposed to be played. No, that wasn't the final nail in the coffin for this loss today. It was Hamilton's missed, inter- missed interception. But the point is, I think that from an organizational standpoint, from the head coach on down, maybe not above him, we have poor situational awareness. And sometimes that spills over or is reflected by our players as well. Not a fun game to watch at all, and certainly not one to that was fun to report on or produce this reaction video. Nonetheless, if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy my thoughts or like to hear what I have to say about this game, a 29-24 loss on the road to the Browns, who came into the game 1-6, and six, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.